What's up everyone, it's DJ Rick Webb back with another lighting review video for you guys. We have the brand new RF4s that now have a full color display, all the functionality you could ever want. They come in white, they come in black, and we're gonna get into all this in today's video. All right, so we're gonna break this video into five different sections. If you guys wanna to go to those sections, um, they're divided up on the timeline down below. But first, we're gonna be talking about the specs of these lights, all the numbers and how they work and whatnot. Then we're gonna talk about all the functionality you have with these lights. Then we're gonna do a demo, just showing you guys how bright these are on the different colors. Then we'll do some comparisons of this model and other popular models from both lighting, as well as the original RF4s. And and then we'll wrap it up with my honest opinion of these lights. In starting this video, if you guys have not already checked out the original review video of the Ape Lab knockoffs from both lighting, go check out that video. But after that video was published, there was a surge in demand for these lights. I mean, obviously they're pretty awesome. Both lighting actually reached out to me personally and were like, hey, we're getting a lot of people complaining that they can't set the DMX channel. Do you think we should just put a DMX board in it so you can change it? I'm like, no, 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 no. We need to take all the functionality of the S4s and S6s and cram it into this little tiny box. And that right here is the end result. It's kind of crazy. They actually listen to what you guys want and they listen to their customers. And um, yes, I am a dealer for them, but they listen and they produce the products that we want. And with that said, let's go through the specs. All right, so of course, we're gonna be on the workbench going through all of the specs of these lights. So to start off, it is an all metal construction. So everything around this light is completely metal. They have rubber feet on them that you can take off if you wish. Um, but basically, it's an all metal construction and the top is a glass, plexiglass material as well. The white is a all gloss white finish and currently the top is this glossy black with blue kind of uh, dots all over it. That is actually gonna be changing. The first 1,000-ish lights are gonna have this and then they're gonna switch over to an all black cover on here as well. It's just material demand. Um, not a huge deal in my eyes. They basically said they gotta go through all these before they can get to the solid black on the top. But I mean, when these are on, no one's gonna be looking at the top anyways. It's just a minor cosmetic feature. It is a matte black finish all the way around. Again, all metal construction. On the top here, you're looking at four 12 watt diodes. All these diodes are hex diodes. That means they got red, green, blue, amber, UV, and white. So you have full color mixing capabilities, everything you would want in this light. It is a 25 degree beam angle, which is very wide. The beam angle is very comparable to the S6 lights if you've ever seen them before. And we will showcase that beam angle when we get into the demo in comparison to other lights like this S4 right here, which is a lot bigger. I do want to point out while I'm here, these lights are exactly the same size and form factor as the original RFs, the, the RF4s. They are exactly the same. The one thing that is completely different on these from the original ones are these screens right here. These full on color display screens, which is gonna tie into our overall functionality portion next. But on the specs section, I do wanna just point out that you have a full color display here. Well, not really a full color. It's got color functionality on the side here. So like I said, we're gonna get into this in the functionality section, but you have a full menu screen here with buttons to be able to go and do all the functionality of it. And then this is your on and off button. And then you have a charging port right here. The charger is a wall wart like this. So basically there's a little light right here that turns on red when it is charging and turns green when it's fully charged. And basically it's just a little computer charger. Right here are a couple of them plugged into my wall. This one is red for charging. This one over here, the light is now green to indicate it's fully charged. That is how you do that. And also from a spec perspective, uh, these are the internals and we're gonna get into this in the functionality section, but you do have full color mixing on the light, like individual red, green, and blue. There's pre-made colors. This has sound modes. You can adjust the sound sensitivity on, of this light. It has wireless DMX built in and it has wireless DMX receiver and you can change the wireless DMX group. So if you've ever had donor wireless DMX system, where basically there's like seven color channels, you can either be on the red group, the blue group, the yellow group, the green group, etc. You can change to that group in the menu on this light. It also does master slave mode. And for you guys that are wondering, you can master slave this one with the original RF4s as well. Clarify that a little bit more. 
The new one has to be the master, but all of these can be the slaves, all the original ones. So if you've already bought these lights, whether it is the RF4, the RF1, the RF3s, all of them can be used as slaves with the new Mark II generation of these lights. And speaking of RF versus this light, this light is not technically named the RF4 Mark II, although I like to call it the RF4 Mark II because I think that's a better name. The original was the RF4, this one's the RF4 Mark II. So this is actually called the IR4, and that's because the first two letters stand for the way the remote communicates with the light. And with saying that, the remote for the new ones is completely different because we are now using IR communication versus RF communication. To simplify that, IR basically means line of sight. It's like a TV remote. You have to point it directly at the light versus the old lights had RF, which is why you could just push a button and all the lights in the room would work. It's called radio frequency. It's like a Bluetooth controller. So clarify it once again, the new lights are now IR controlled, which means you have to point the, the remote directly at the light. But that's okay because the new lights have way better master slave control and they fix the one problem. If you didn't go check out my previous video on the Ape Labs knockoffs, my one gripe was that, well, I had multiple gripes. One was the wireless DMX, one was the DMX channel, but the third one was the terrible master slave functionality. And that was because you, if you wanted to use master slave, you could not use the remote. With this light, you can now use the remote to control the master, which is perfect. And the last spec that you guys probably really want to know is the battery life of these lights. Now, the most important spec that probably all of you guys want to know is how long does it take to charge these lights and what is the battery life like? Now, we will preference battery life is different depending on how you use the lights. If you are combining, say, like red, green, and blue to make white, it's gonna burn three times more battery than if you just turned on the white diode. Single color, so if you just wanted to do like red, green, blue, amber, white, UV, where you're only using one of the six, di six colors in the diode, is going to provide the longest battery life in comparison to running this aggressively with like red, green, and blue, or like a red, green, and blue mixed color. Those are gonna burn more battery. What I am doing is actually doing testing right now. I got an eight unit case of these lights. I'm gonna put all eight lights through the test to time how long it takes to charge the lights, how long they will last on a single color diode, and how long they will last on the absolute worst case scenario, which is red, green, blue, amber, white, and UV all on at the same time at max brightness, which you should never do at an event. So that'll give us the absolute worst case scenario for battery life and the absolute best case scenario for battery life and pretty much somewhere in between is what we're probably gonna expect. I will say both lighting does claim that these lights can get 15 hours of battery life on one color. So we're gonna put that to the test and see if it can do 15 hours on one color. To save you guys waiting on anything, right here are the results. For a single color, it lasts this long. At absolute worst case scenario, it lasts this long with all the diodes on. And I would roughly say that on an average DJ use, you're gonna find this battery life which I don't know this yet, but I believe it's very comparable to what you will find in the S4 and the S6, which are the most popular lights that we sell. So now let's get into functionality. So before we get into the actual lights themselves, right here is the manual that comes with it. Again, it's called the IR4 now. I think it should be called the RF4 Mark II. That's me, we call them the RF4 Mark II on our website. Again, that's bothlightingusa.com. Hold up, Rick, you just mentioned a website. Yes, I did, bothlightingusa.com. We officially now have a website for uh, my company. My company is the only US-based dealer for both lighting in America, and it is at bothlightingusa.com. On the website, you can see all the different lights that we offer, the case configurations, the prices, etc. We have up lights, we have movers, we have cold sparks, we have cold spark uh, batteries, so you can operate your cold sparks wirelessly. You can also use the same batteries with your movers to make them wireless as well. And again, all of that is at bowflightingusa.com. By being the only US-based dealer in America, we give you warranty protection, so 100% one year, no questions asked warranty. So if you get your lights, and I will straight up tell you that from selling hundreds, actually we're probably in the thousands now, of lights to customers like you guys all across America, thank you guys so much for the support by the way. It is awesome to have a whole company now based on this. but. 
one out of every about 50 lights has a problem. To make sure you're not rolling the dice, if you buy through us, we have a 100% one year guarantee. So if you have any problems with your light when you first get the light, six months down the road, eight years down the road, a year down the road, or actually, you know, if it's more than a year, we'll still help you out. But within a year, all you have to do is ship the light directly to us here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and we will fix the light and ship it back to you. We have all the circuit boards, diodes, batteries to fix all of the different lights that we sell. So we can literally get them turned around and back to you normally within about a week, which is pretty amazing. Besides free repairs, we're also based here in the United States and provide all the customer support you could ever want. If you got any questions related to your lights or ordering the lights, all you got to do is reach out to us. Again, bothlightingusa.com. There's an email in there, a chat feature. We have a Facebook page. You can go check us out on Instagram at bothlightingusa as well. And for you guys that are on a tight budget, we also have a variety of payment methods as well as payment plans available to purchase your lights. So again, if you want more details on these specific lights that we are talking about in this video, go check out both lightingusa.com back to the video so in the the mint or the the pamphlet you get with the lights you're gonna get all the info on what the controls are all of the different modes we're gonna get through that in a second here are the dmx channels it is a 10 channel light and it is the exact same light program that you find in the both lighting s4s the both lighting s6s the both lighting s4 minis so if you have any of these other both lighting lights already set up on your dmx system these lights will start working immediately if you have the s4 set up in sound switch all you got to do is set these to the exact same channels and you're good to go works perfectly info on the remote there's also an android app for this i'm not going to get into this in the video but if you guys want to check out there is an ios and an android app for these lights lights as well so they have app functionality as well i've tried it before with the s4s and it wasn't that great so i'm not going to bother with it in this video and that's it all right so we're going to go into the functionality on the menu screen now so as soon as we turn on the menu the first thing you're going to be agreed with here we're on the dmx address channel right now 001 battery indicator on the right we have the wireless dmx group right there and we have ir turned on as well now if you let this light sit for a few seconds it'll actually go into slave mode right there it went so if you ever want your light to be a slave and not a master again all you need is one master and then the rest of your lights can be slaved and they will do exactly as the master light does and we'll show that here in a demo you just need to be on the dmx screen let it sit for a few minutes and it'll go into slave mode so now i'm going to go back into here this is the dmx screen you can go all the way to 512 to change your channel if you hit the right button over here you can select between either 10 channel mode or six channel mode six is just basically the red green blue amber uv white and the 10 channel mode is all the functionality including strobe and dimming capabilities if i click that again we're back to address now we want to go to the next function we hit the left button over here it'll go for channel again now we're on the preset color modes. So there are 32 preset colors in here, all different colors that you can utilize. You can also adjust the speed if you want the to be strobing or not. So zero to nine. Then we go to our modes. So we have a jump mode here and there are five of them, nine of them, nine different jump modes. Then there is a fade mode. Again, there are, I believe, two different fade modes. You can adjust the speed of the fade modes as well. Then you get to the music mode. So there are four different music modes that you can choose from, and you can adjust the speed, which is actually the sensitivity. So you can adjust the sensitivity of this light so that it's not extremely stroby or it can be less stroby depending on where you put your master light in the room. If you put it right next to your speakers, of course, you want to lower that sensitivity, but that way you can fine tune the sensitivity of the sound active mode. So it looks best if you're going to be using it in sound active mode. After that, we have the app functionality. Again, I'm not going to go through the app necessarily because I have not had a good experience with the app, but if you want to try it out, you can. So now we're on the color mixing screen. If we click our options key here, we can go through the red green blue green blue this is probably uv then you have your amber and your white and they are zero to 100 but you can make your custom colors within the color mixing section of the light after that we're going to click menu again now we are selecting our dmx wireless dmx group so up here you'll see this wireless dmx it'll change colors and for you guys that are familiar with donor wireless DMX or any Chinese based wireless DMX, that is the basically color up here that you're gonna be matching. So in our company, we use blue. 
so we would leave it on the blue channel. Then after you're done, you would hit the next button over here to confirm it. You can also turn wireless DMX off. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can do that as well. After that, you can turn the IR functionality on or off. This is a good functionality if you want to turn all of the slaves IR function off. So that way it doesn't accidentally become a master because the worst thing you could have is two masters. You never want that. So um, that is an option if you are using a lot of master slave to label your master and leave the IR on the master. And then all of the other lights that are your slaves turn IR off. Next, we are back to master functionality and DMX. And that is the menu screen. I will point out right up here to the left where I'm pointing. That is the IR receiver. So that's where you need to point your remote, which we're going to get into now on the functionality to show you how that works. So moving on to the remote, this is your IR remote. And like I mentioned, you have to point this directly at the light, otherwise it won't do anything. Like if I hit amber right now, it's not doing anything unless I point it at the light. So the remote might be a little bit blurry, but I'm gonna go through all the different functionality real quick. You got on, off, your brightness control up here, some pre-controlled colors. These are also other pre-controlled colors down through here. These are your cycle buttons on different menus. You can cycle through different things. Your speed control, which is also your sound sensitivity control, but you can control the speed of your fade or et cetera. You got your strobe at the top, auto mode, which no one ever uses, fade, pulse, and then slave. And then at the bottom, you have all four of your sound active modes. So all the real controls you could ever want if you don't want to DMX these lights. Most notably is slave mode so that you can turn the light to a slave and then you can set one of your lights to be the master to control all the slaves. But again, we can just go straight through the color changes here, the red, green, blue, amber, all these different colors on the bottom. If you wanna make the light a little bit dimmer, you can do that with the controls at the top, make it dimmer or brighter. You can turn them off, turn them on. Again, you have to point it directly at the light to turn them on. Then you can go change your colors. Let's raise that brightness back up. And again, you can go to sound active mode, one, two. If you want to adjust the sound sensitivity, you can do that right here with the speed button and it will tell you on the screen the sound sensitivity level right there. So you don't have to touch the light at all. You can go to fade mode. Again, you can adjust the speed of the fade. You can go to pulse mode. You can go to slave mode. Pretty much all the same functionality that the light has, you can do it directly here on the remote. The only thing you can't do is individual color mixing. You can go to um, basically the red. If you click on any of the colors here, red, green, blue, you can then use these cycle colors right here these in the middle. You can cycle through all 32 of the preset colors easily with that portion of it. But you cannot do individual uh, red, green, blue color mixing on the remote. You have to do that on the light itself. Same thing with adjusting your wireless DMX channel or adjusting your wireless DMX group or the app control or IR on and off. All those settings are on the light itself. But basically all the functionality you would need at an event to control a master light is right here in terms of changing from a preset color to then running a fade during dinner, say, then to your sound active mode for the rest of the night, bouncing the music, you can do that all right on the remote. So with functionality out of the way, we're gonna move on to the demo. So I'm gonna take you guys actually inside my house. In my dining room, I have some white walls that are gonna make it a little bit easier to show you guys the effects and compare and contrast some of these lights as well in our comparison section. So let's head on inside for that portion of the video. All right, so again, we're in the dining room where I have a nice white wall to work with, and that is what it looks like. Like I mentioned, it's a very wide beam angle at 25 degrees. The camera does not do it the best justice because it's giving a really big hot spot right there. Let's look at some different colors. Here is green. Green shows a little bit better what this light really does. Switch over to blue. And let's go fade. So there you guys go. There's a little look through all of it. Um, I know a lot of people want to know what amber looks like. So that is amber. It's not much it's about the same power level as red is. Green is definitely the most powerful. Blue right there with red and amber. Here's the white, pure white, and the UV. UV is a lot dimmer, but that is the nature of UV itself. There you go, go. So now let me show you how you master slave these lights, and then we'll do a comparison with the S4s. So for master slave to work, you need to have one master and the rest of your lights need to be slaved. So to do that, basically turn all your lights on to the original DMX, and then they'll go to slave mode. And then your master, you wanna change that to a color, a fade mode, or a sound active mode and it'll be the master controlling the rest of the slaves. You also need to make sure that the wireless DMX group, that little Wi-Fi symbol, you need to make sure they're all on the exact same color as well. Because if this light, which it is, is on the red and that one's on the blue, 
they won't master slave. So as you can kind of see right there, it says slave. So basically it was on the DMX mode, let it sit there for a second. Then it goes to slave and you will notice that the wireless DMX signal right there is flashing to indicate it is receiving the signal from the master, which is right there. And they're doing the same thing. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned you might want to turn the IR functionality of your slave lights off. Here's the reason why. If I'm pointing at this light to make it turn green, I might accidentally also tell that light to become green, which isn't a problem necessarily. It becomes a problem when we're doing stuff like sound active and fade modes, because if I activate sound active mode and I'm trying to only turn on the master to sound active mode, I can act, I, if the lights are too close, I might accidentally turn that one also on sound active mode and then you'll run into all sorts of conflicts because all of the other slaves are gonna be listening to either that light or that light or it's gonna be conflicting, it's gonna to lead to problems. So I'm gonna purposely point this way to only get that light. So that light did stay a slave and this light is now the sound active light. There you go, it's now in sound active mode listening to me and it's not doing well so I'm gonna up the sensitivity, change it to number one. And I will say the sound active mode on this is not that sensitive. I have to like slap my foot pretty hard to get to do something. That's pretty good because most of the time we're by speakers and we don't necessarily want it to be super sound active, but that right there is how you master slave it. Now, while we're on the topic of master slave, let's talk about how you master slave the original RF lights as well. What you're gonna wanna do is turn the light on and you're gonna wanna go to the pink function right there. So you're gonna want it on the pink light or the pinkish purple light. That's gonna be our slave function for these lights. Now you notice it's not doing the same thing here and that's because there's another step. Remember when I said the wireless DMX group also needs to be the same? Well, the original RF4s, RF1s, RF3s, they only operate on the red wireless DMX channel. So we have to change all of our lights to the red channel for it to then work. So while we're on the subject of master slave, now let me show you how you can connect your original. If you have the original RF4s, RF3s, or RF1s, you can actually use them with the new MK2 model. And there really is only two steps. Same setup here, you need to set a master, but you have to be on the red wireless DMX group, which is the default. The original ones only operate on the red wireless DMX group, that's the little Wi-Fi symbol, so they have to be on red for them to work with the originals. Second thing you need to do is turn on your original light, and you're gonna wanna go to the teal mode. So we're gonna look, that's the pink mode. We wanna be on the teal mode, and boom. It is now functioning as a slave, being controlled by this master light right there. So now if we turn it to red, green, blue, amber, the original one is now doing exactly what our master light right here is doing. And this is what the original RF4s or RF3s or RF1s were lacking. Sound active mode that synced across all the light. And this right here is what I was talking about that you might wanna turn IR off. So this light actually is stuck on amber and it now says master. So I'm gonna change it back to a slave and it will now work with the rest of them in a second or two. There it goes. So now it is working again with all the lights. So now if I go to sound active mode, all the lights are in unison. On the original RF4s, RF3s, RF1s, they worked on radio frequency. So when you turned on sound active, each light was doing sound active however it thought was best. This way, all of your sound active lights are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. If I need to go into more clarity on how that works, let me know and I can make a video. But now let's get into some comparisons between the S4 and the RF4. All right, so right here are the color differences and the beam angle differences. Like we mentioned, the beam angle over here is a lot wider of a beam angle. It's a 25 degree beam angle. That is the same beam angle you will find in the S6 model. I personally have the S4 model. I like the S4 model for a variety of reasons. One, I do like the tighter beam angle. It's more like unison going up the wall. Some people like the S6 one because it's wider. Um, but the big thing for me is the S4 has more battery life than the S6. That's the main reason why I have S4s. But in comparing these two lights, you'll find that you have a narrower beam angle and a wider beam angle. If I had an S6 right here, it will look very similar to the RF4. And if you guys can tell, brightness wise, it's not too far off. They're about the same going up the wall. You can definitely tell at the top that the S4 is brighter, but that could also be because it's got a narrower, tighter beam angle. 
but comparison wise, they're not too far off. Now for green, I went ahead and separated them out a little bit further so you guys can really see the difference. And definitely the S4 is brighter when it comes to when we get up to the top end of the wall here, this is an eight foot high ceiling, but pretty comparable. Again, you can also see in this that the S4 is brighter at the top. Here is the pure white diode. Definitely can now see a little bit of a difference when we get up to the top even clearer. Just a tad bit brighter. I wouldn't say it's twice as bright, especially in person looking at it. It's like maybe 25% more bright. But then again, it also could be because of the lens that shoots it up higher on the wall. Because down here, the brightness is very comparable. And lastly, everyone wants to see amber. Here is amber. Again, brighter on the S4. It does not look that much brighter in person. On the camera shot, it looks significantly brighter. But again, I would say it's about 25% more bright on the S4. And there are your comparisons. Continuing on the comparison, just because the S4 light right here, and there's also the S6. Again, I have a whole video on the S4 versus S6 and S4 minis and S6 minis. Pretty much the S4 is my king. This is my favorite light. We own over 50 of these lights now in my company. Personally, we use them all the time. We use and abuse these lights. It's only right to compare it to this guy right here. And um, size wise, I don't even know if it's a comparison. It is the same form factor like this in terms of size, but I mean, literally you can stack like four of these up inside of the size of this light. Weight wise, you're looking at seven pounds right here. And this guy right here weighs a whopping two pounds. Seven pounds, two pounds. And for this light right here, configuration wise, you can purchase it in a four unit soft bag. There are six slots in here, so you could make it a six if you wanted to, but they come with only four. The other two slots are for your chargers and for your remote controls. And then the four center slots are for the lights. So four unit, and it is like a hard case. It's like a hard shell. It doesn't like collapse. It's got like a rigid side kind of form to it, which is nice. This bag right here comes in at right around 13 pounds. So extremely light. Four lights, 13 pounds, pretty hard to beat. Just in comparison, a four unit bag of these weighs about 30 pounds. 30 pounds, 13 pounds. They also come in these eight unit, it's kind of hard to see, but there's eight unit right here, eight unit charging cases. So it basically has a power strip already built into it that you can plug all of your wall work charger into. And then there is an IEC input on the side with a switch. And you're gonna wanna always charge these with the lid open for ventilation, of course, but that's how that works. So these lights right here, you just stick them down in and then you uh, take your power cord over to it, plug them in, plug them all in, charge them up, good to go. And it's basically like a briefcase. So you shut it, you lock it, and then you have a handle on the side. There's no wheels, but you just pick up the handle and go. There's also a little sticker right here to remind you that when charging, keep the top cover open. And of course that's for heat and ventilation because as you're charging batteries, if you've never charged a battery before, it gets hot. So you wanna let it breathe. The weight on one of those briefcases with eight lights is about 40 pounds. Roughly like 42 pounds, but 42 pounds for the whole entire briefcase. Which is pretty incredible because four of these weighs 28 pounds, 30 pounds roughly. For 10 pounds more, you can get eight lights in a briefcase. I'd rather be rolling up to an event with two 40 pound briefcase instead of four bags that are 30 pounds of these or even better yet, I mean, these have wheels, but each one of these cases weighs 80 pounds. One eight unit case of S4s is 80 pounds. One eight unit case of these lights is 40 pounds. That's incredible. All right, I'm gonna sit down here and give you guys my honest opinion now on these lights. I do also, before I get into my opinion, want to debunk a couple of questions I think people might ask. If you have the original RF4s, RF3s, or RF1s, buying one of these lights will give you master slave capabilities, but it still will not give you full DMX capabilities. To operate the original ones on DMX, you still have to be on the red channel and on DMX channel one. So the red DMX group and DMX channel one. These lights, you can be on any DMX group you want, any DMX channel you want, zero or one to five, 12, but getting one of these, they cannot communicate with the other lights that doesn't work. These can communicate via master slave. The new ones have to be the masters. The other ones can be the slaves. That's the only way that works. Also, because I've had people ask it before, no, they do not talk to the S4s or S6s or S4 minis or they don't talk with each other. They use different circuit boards and different communication styles. I don't know how it works. This will not master slave with this or the originals. They don't talk to each other. These will talk with the original ones because they use the same circuit board. So honest opinion time on the new RF4 Mark IIs or the IR4s, depending on what you want to call them. 
we're gonna be calling them the Mark IIs, in my opinion, the RF4 Mark IIs, even though they don't use radio frequency. Personally, these things are sick. One, that both lighting listened to what I had to say and other people had to say about the original ones and actually implemented features that we want in lights um, is amazing. Literally, quote unquote, I told him, I said, take the functionality and controls you find in the S4 and S6s and put them in this light. And that's exactly what we got here. We have the exact same functionality and control that you have in your S4s and S6s. My only gripe, or I got, I got a couple of, of, well, I got one gripe. No, they're just pet peeves. I got two pet peeves. One is DMX signal distance. The DMX signal distance is not as good as the S4s and S6s. I have seen in my testing that around around the 60 foot, 75 foot mark around, from the transmitter, I run into issues with this. And I also run into issues if I'm in different rooms. Not big issues, but I will lose connection if they're in different rooms. And the main reason for that is that it does not have an actual physical antenna on the outside of the light. The S4s over here, they actually have a antenna that you can pop out on the side here, and that will 100% increase your range. I have used these lights at 100, 120, two rooms over, outside. These things have incredible signal when it comes to Wi-Fi strength. Pretty much as good as you can get with these lights, especially if you have a transmitter up high, you can communicate with these very well. But uh, at least in master slave mode, normally I could get about 100 feet off of these. You wanna make sure you put the master, just in general, between this and this you want to make sure your master if you're going to do master slave or if you're doing wireless dmx you want to try to put your transmitter as centralized to all the lights as possible so if i have so if i have a big rectangular room i want my master to be in the middle somewhere if possible of course it doesn't always work out that way if your dj setup's on the far end of a long room it doesn't make sense to have a transmitter in the middle or on the far end if you are using wireless DMX, you can actually daisy chain a secondary transmitter in the middle to improve the signal. I can go into that in a different video. So from a wireless DMX standpoint, it's not a huge deal. I have workarounds to increase the DMX signal range in terms of using a secondary transmitter in the middle of the room. But from a standpoint of master slave, or if you're not using that, uh, the DMX range is not as far as I would like. My secondary like pet peeve is just I don't think these look as impressive just from a light standpoint. Because they're so small and compact, I don't know. Maybe it's just my personal opinion, but like for the money we're charging for uplights, and maybe this is a way we're going to be able to do uplights cheaper and offer them cheaper for clients. I don't know. When you bring in a bunch of these lights and these big things, they're bulky. Well, they're not bulky, but they're, they're big and they got a shield on the front of them, they just look a little bit more presentable. And uh, maybe I'm just griping because I could get those little plastic shields you can put in front of these lights and make them look cleaner. Uh, but just, they, they're, they're so much smaller that I would be, I just don't know. That's just my pet peeve. I talked about that when I had the S4 minis as well. Maybe it's just something I gotta get over. I'm used to the standard being these and that's just maybe a DJ thing. I don't know if the clients notice it, they probably don't. But I will say, in terms of trying to pick up this light and steal it, it's a lot less convincing because it's really hard to hide and conceal. This thing right here, a, a, a girl at a high school dance could throw this in her purse, I mean, or a guy could put it in his back pocket practically and take it away. Maybe a little concerning? I don't know, you tell me. But with all that said, all those gripes, I will say straight up, these are impressive. And I will be this year in 2023, this season, I'm gonna start using these. I'm gonna get me um, probably one case and I'm gonna mix them in with my S4s at my events. I'm gonna take two normal cases. I always take 16 S4s to all of my events with up lights. I'm gonna bring a briefcase of eight of these and use them in conjunction with my S4s to see how I like them. And um, if I like them as much as I think I will, I'm probably gonna switch over to these because you just can't beat the weight. I mean, it's insane how light they are. Although I will say I probably will first give these to my other guys because they use like cars to transport to their events or we'll put them in the rental uh line first but um yeah i i think these lights are super impressive and for the price point these are a steal especially if you're a young dj out there go pick yourself up four of these it's insane you can get four of these for the same price as what when i started out the wired uh american dj hex pars or not even the hex pars that the profiles the like 10 millimeter diodes back 
uh, 10 years ago when I first started out, they cost the same as what four of these lights with wireless battery powered control cost. Crazy. Comment down below if you guys remember how much a wired light used to cost. A wired power light and battery up lights used to be like terrible too because the batteries were just god awful. But nowadays like the batteries are so good, the, the light output's incredible and this form factor is insane. For you guys still watching the video, I want you guys to comment down below squad because you guys are still watching the video at this point and I appreciate all of my squad members that watch these videos all the way through and through and you, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, you should do so because if you're going to comment squad, you should be a subscriber as well because we produce dope content, reviews, tips and tricks, business videos, etc. You can go check out the DJ Life podcast for more business insight. We talk about all sorts of business stuff over there, all the ins and outs of how things work. If you're watching the video when it first comes out, like if you're watching this a month later, it doesn't matter, but if you're watching the video when it first comes out, as of right now, the lights will not be ready to ship until March 1st. Just a material thing. We don't have the materials we need to be able to make as many lights as what we're gonna anticipate with the production and how amazing these lights are. We expect to sell a lot of them, both me and the company, both lighting. Just this is a very good product that we have came out with. And I'm super excited about getting these into your guys' hands. But the materials, we're not gonna have the materials to be able to start producing these until March 1st and shipping will start around that time frame as well. So if you're watching this video after March, don't worry, they're 100% ready to go. You can buy them right now, the black or the white, whatever you want, or the white model right here. I know people love this white and they haven't had a white model yet of this light and I'm, this, this looks sick. I personally am not a big fan of white. I like my black model, but who knows? Maybe I'll switch to white this year. But anyways, guys, if you wanna learn more about these lights and order these lights for yourself, uh, check out the website, bowflightingusa.com or you can sign up for our newsletter and email us directly if you any questions you can uh, dm us on facebook or on instagram both lighting usa is the handle at both lighting usa for all sources again we provide a one-year warranty with all lights purchased through us we provide all the repairs here in the united states that are needed at no cost to you and we offer payment plans and all sorts of ways to pay including amazon pay and paypal pay Check out the website, bowflightingusa.com. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.